did it just got on in my eye <laughs> oh my god hey happy monday it's cold we got a heater that's burning my legs but everything else it's is too cold. much it's, it's too quick. much okay. don't move it it doesn't like to get moved i already did this once is it too hot right there it is it's like hot on my legs it's gonna heat my tequila up too tequila how's y'all's monday going for us it was the first day back to work and to school for the kids so i finally got the house all nice and quiet to myself again but um as far as anything exciting not a whole lot just catching up on laundry catching up on some social media it's kind of what i've been up to all day uh busy but it doesn't seem exciting so I will say it was exciting having Rebecca and Andy here from like Sunday yeah. through Friday. Like it was, it was pretty awesome. It's cool. And uh, they left on Friday, you know, early afternoon on Friday. And what did we do Saturday? We did stuff. We went shooting guns. You took a nap. That's right. That's right. And I was recovering. Um. And but I moved. I got the garage situated super, back. Super hot today. Cause Hank, Hank got a little love, and Big Beefy was in here getting ceramic coated, as all y'all saw last what Thursday. I think what? we did do our yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why you know it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and here we are Monday. So not a lot of days. We wanted to get back in the routine of doing this on Monday. We like doing it on Monday. So. <clears throat> Some things have happened, not a ridiculous amount of things. Um, some things have happened, but are not bearing fruit yet. So we don't want to uh, jinx anything by spilling news yet. But we got a lot of cool stuff going on here. Yeah. Uh, I did get this kick-ass drug runner Baja from uh, one of our sponsors. Show them the back. The back is oh. the cool part. Your butt's not in it. Oh, it's a golden, golden church of speed. Church of speed. That's awesome. Super cool. From Mexico. Hecho in Mexico. In Mexico. I think. You don't say you don't say X's, it's it's like a J. <sighs> like like the J is the H. So and X's are like So this is cool, H's. you know, it's it's uh it's made of hemp. So uh Can I smoke it? If you're feeling sad, you can light me on fire. And it'll make you feel better. No. That's an so, awful idea. Maybe just your sweatshirt. Um, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, Andy brought me a whole, like, a gallon of Maker's Mark. So that's what I'm having this evening. It is amazing. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Tequila. Altos. Sponsor me. So, yeah, I mean, we didn't really know a whole bunch to talk about. Uh, I ordered a bunch of... You want me the to fire, scoot it back? The thingy, the heater thing. too much? It, it's just Hold right on. on my leg. We don't want to light on the fire. Here. I can sit like this. This is no, too bad. Okay. It's going to turn off. Oh, my God. Oh, you know where it is? It's a tilt thing. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. I'll sit this way now. Okay, so, so we moved it like over here. So I'm gonna we're using this our way. little buddy. We have a freaking flamethrower we can use in here, but it uses a lot of propane, so we're using a little buddy heater. It's called Mister Heater Mr. Yeah. Portable Buddy. Portable it's not buddy. the little buddy. The little buddy. And it's is good. Even smaller. Um, it's not crazy cold. It's 50 degrees in the garage right now. So, but I moved a set of tires, two sets of tires, back in here. A set of Pilot Sport 4S's. I like tires. And a set of new RE71R's. The rest of the tires are in the bottom of the garage still. We don't know what we're going to do with those yet. Probably going to have some used tires for sale. Like mm -hmm. stupid cheap. Just come get them and yeah, pass so them on so people can use them. There's life left in them. all Mustang sizes. But they're not going to be good for competition. But if you want to do a burnout, if you want to do an HPDE on them, if you just want to have uh, some tires, they're... They're gonna be good, and yeah. when I say cheap, I'm talking like less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, like I said, like, and that would be two ninety five. No, it won't, I won't have any two ninety five. I have a couple three oh five nineteens and some two eighty five eighteens. 
like 30 series too. So they're all real short. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't typically do a 35 or a 40 series yeah, they're, tire. They're taking up a lot of like, space in here. I like the way a short tire feels just personally. So I turn um, and bite. I, I can feel the sway between a 30 series and a 40 series tire. So when you're looking at your tire, you see your wheel and then you see that chunk of rubber down to the ground. That's about your, that's what I'm talking about is that thickness. Um, those usually come 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, all the way up to like truck tire sizes. Yeah, which truck get really, tires really, are like get really 65 deep. and 70 because they got a lot more sidewall. Yeah. But the more sidewall you have, the more Flex. sway you have between the so, tire yeah. and the wheel. So the bottom of your tire is here and then your wheel's sitting here and you go into <clears> a, <throat> uh, for you guys, what would that be? Y'all's right or left? Either way, the tire sways, the whole car sways to the other side, and that much sidewall creates movement. I can feel that driving, and I'll start to counter steal just for that little bit of sway in the tire. So a shorter tire for me gives me the most accurate butt feel, which is kind of, that's just always the way I've heard describe it. Yeah. You know, just intuitive driver feel. I just <clears> I really <throat> like a sharp, yeah, you don't, you don't really heavy-duty sidewall. Cars short, losing not grip. Sharp. But, um, you don't want to think the car is losing grip because your tires are rocking around yeah. a little bit. I get messed up when I get into a street car that doesn't have, like driving my blue car. It just has um, a comfort leather trimmed seat and it's got like built in springs so it's comfortable. You got a cushion in the seat. It messes me up in turns i'll start to you know it, it, the butt feel is a little bit later than in the race car which is just a tub seats and directly mounted to the floor so um i just i like to have as much connection to that ground and feel everything that the car is doing so again we're gonna have some tires cheap free i, I don't know we're just yeah, gonna definitely want to get rid of them we so, like alcohol we do and long walks on the beach <laughs> no i don't <laughs> I don't like long walks on the beach. I like long walks around the racetrack. Mm. So track walks if the track's flat. Track walks. Track walks at CMP. At, at CMP. Hashtag not fucking road Atlanta. <laughs> or yeah, I mean God, I wouldn't mind. I, I guess did an turn infield track one. walk at road Atlanta one time. It yeah. was hell. Um. Yeah, you did. <clears throat> you walked. <laughs> yeah, that was so. our first track event ever. I was like, man, this is a lot of pavement. Yep. But uh, hilarious. So. But yeah, Andy and Rebecca did a kick-ass job on Big Beefy. Look how uh, shiny is Hank is. Hank's all shined nice up. Wash. His wheels are ceramic coated now. His see new them. homos. They're back there. Are they there? Can you see oh, them there? Oh, 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 oh little, they're not even nice. shiny because the light's not hitting yeah, them. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. I, so, will, I will say that race car is parked like right here now mm -hmm. and she was in the driveway all day and I thought we were going to do this where we could see all of Hank but yeah. Kyle moved him in, her in and definitely figured out that she is 100% out of gas. Yeah, uh, um, took a fucking minute to start so I think at your, it, at your last uh, track outing when you went out. Stuff was going crazy. Your fuel pressure, your fuel gauge was reading like you had three quarters of a tank, and you surely did not. But yeah, because I don't think we'll see. I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna have to use a gas can and go. I don't even think it'll make it to the gas. It's station. not gonna make it to the gas. So station. Uh, I didn't want to move it around too much more. Uh, we already have one slightly damaged vehicle in the driveway because Big Beefy did incur a scratch. Uh, a long time ago. Dramatic, if you will. Oh my god. Really? What? It is not... We gotta have something to talk about. It is a bad scratch. It's not that bad. Well, the do the we, I took a hit in the parking lot. And I don't know and you didn't when know it happened. It. You're just, you are uh, a little dramatic. I, was, um, I, I can see it right now on my... He's very upset. He's very upset. So... You can hardly see it because primer's a light color and it's a dark colored truck that has edges and when the light shines on it, it just reflects light and it, it's actually kind of hard it. to see. I can see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're so. hilarious. 
But I'm gonna uh, fix it for it'll you. It'll get fixed. I'm gonna fix it it's for you. It's not a big deal. If I, I mean, can't fix it, Eddie Bell will fix yeah, it for you. We'll, we'll get it fixed. It's 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 minor. It just sucks. It's a new vehicle. But at least the first thing's over with. We're trying to not have any more. But uh, when I got home today, I pulled in and it looked like a a gauntlet for April to get her car back into where it usually goes. So I was like, man, we gotta. Oh, I can't have any more carnage because my Tacoma was way up in the front of the driveway, and our driveway where, is a trapezoid yeah, shape. Yeah, it's a weird and shape. And the entrance is the narrow part, and it kind of gets mm -hmm. wider as you get closer yep. to the garage. So, so my truck was in the front, and then race car was over a little bit more than I usually park my truck. So beefy was over a little more. So my dad was over a little more, and there was like. Just enough room for a car to get by my dad, and I was like, "Man, she's doing really good, though." I don't I will think say I don't she's think that she would have really done good anything at parking her car. But I was like, "She is." We need to shift everything over like two feet. Yeah, I agree. Move dad it back a little bit. So, so I did that choice. this afternoon, and while I was doing that, I said, "Well, I might as well just pull race car back in the garage." Uh, that's what I was going to say. We ordered race car does have a leaky caliper. Our driver's side rear caliper is leaking a little bit. I bought a rebuild kit, and uh, we'll be doing that sooner than later, maybe this weekend. I don't know. It's going to warm up towards the end of the week. I might have plans so, at the end of the week. I might have to go to Greenville, South Carolina, or invite a Greenville, South Carolina friend to come take a drive with me. So if it's warm, I might need to go for a drive. You don't want to go and drive with people with, with cars. European cars? I do. <clears throat> as long as they have V8s, I'll allow it. Yep. I, or, I would allow V10s. And or I mean, if I had biker friends that lived in South Carolina and could <clears throat> come go on a drive with me, yeah. I would invite them too. But um, I don't. But, but we don't. I mean, nothing's pressing right now. Yeah. And that was kind of the thing That's, for this live stream is like the big thing we've been seeing, big thing I've been noticing is you have had. Your 10 days in motorsport challenge going on with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And uh, it started with mostly what is, women. What is that? I'm posting. <clears throat> you post a photo that means something to you in motorsports. I don't day, get to talk about with it. With no comments or anything. Just a photo That's really that hard is for memorable. Because I like to talk about stuff. And then you nominate someone each day. And then that person it's does the same. The so thing. you get a lot of photos of. Uh, cool motorsports days for people, I guess. Days it, that have meaning. It's gonna, what it does, and it's supposed to help you grow the sport, is you're supposed to nominate all these people and then they start posting pictures of race cars and it's a non-committal yeah. uh, non viewing experience for your friends. Like, they're just scrolling and they're just gonna <laughs> see race cars. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, pretty car. And Participate, then though. It, 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 they just start thinking race cars, race, motorsport. It's just really to, it's a non -pre, no pressure, low pressure for everybody involved. <clears throat> just put up a picture yeah. that meant something to you or that you just like from your motorsport experience. Or even if you were, you know, a kid and you were watching a race, you can actually do like a screenshot of the race and put it as a picture. It just... It kind of helps people think about motorsports, Survive the winter. see motorsports, and it may open a conversation, but you're not supposed to talk about it, which does bother me because I want to explain like Well, I think picture. if somebody says something <laughs> but, in the comments, um, you can, you can absolutely. say something. But. So it's cool. So <clears throat> you're posting 10 pictures, and you're going to nominate 10 people. So that's a 100 picture, right? Yeah. 10 times 10. So that's a 100 pictures, and they're each going to nominate 10 people are supposed to so yeah, it's keep just it going people people like don't to be, look at race cars you're not the only not one if you're watching this live stream you're not the only one scrolling through facebook just looking for car yeah. pictures you know you, you got to post some of your own car up and i'm totally guilty of that i don't do it i have so many amazing pictures of my car on track from kyle from trad's photos from perry bennett photos that i don't post them and i really should i'm think. I'm making a mental note right now that I need to just post more Thousands. pictures. Thousands. 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 I'm videos. sorry y'all are going to have to look at shitbox Mustangs, but that's what I got. Um, <laughs> so, in, in doing that, 
um, when you're looking back, not to be redundant, some of your photos don't involve yeah, mustangs. Yeah, that's true. And that was something that I wanted to talk about a little bit right now, is that a lot of people that watch this or see you at time trials events or hill climbs or whatever think that you're always, you always were and always will be a Mustang girl, right? And you might always be one. Might now. But... <clears throat> For like what, twenty years? What my did you drive for life. like twenty years? <laughs> what did I drive? What did my parents drive? Um, I came from a BMW driving family. I really considered getting a tattoo of a BMW. I wanted us to get married at the BMW oh. Performance Center, which still being a car girl, that's a really cool venue, and I would still consider it if we uh, had a formal wedding. But um, no, I really, I really. I, my first car was an E30 325i Sport and Hell Rot Red. Um, is it automatic? It was a five speed oh. manual and it took me a long time to learn how to drive it because my parent, my mom took me out, got frustrated. My dad took me out and got frustrated. Like they just <clears throat> were like, she's never going to get it. And if you've ever driven an E30, the clutch is like this long, okay? And I just couldn't figure out where it would engage and disengage, so it, I just couldn't get it. And my parents are sitting next to me, like, telling me a million things. Extremely and, constructive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> constructive is not <clears throat> the word I would use. So, there was a lot of pressure there, and honestly, my parents were just like, at 15, I told them that I could drive with my learner's permit with any licensed driver. They didn't quite realize it had to be like an adult driver. So they were like, oh, your friends have their license. You can go drive with them. Because I was one of the youngest kids in my grade. I graduated high school at 17. So I was typically one of the younger kids. And everybody got their license before me. And my best friend at the time, uh, his name is Christian Ward. He had his license. He drove a, um international... Comanche? Is that what it's called? Scout. Scout. That's what it was. That was his, <clears throat> like, go-to cool car. Daily. It had no ABS, no power, oh, yeah, anything. Oh, yeah, that's a tractor. It basically. was, and yeah, I mean, we lived in a small <clears throat> town. Like, the highest speed he ever had to drive was, like, 35 to the high school. But anyway, he had come over, and I was like, let's take my car out. And my parents had bought me, yes, I'm spoiled, and my parents bought me a BMW. That's my first car. Did but, you love it? Uh, no, I hated it. Mm. It was the worst car I wanted. What kind of seats did it have? It had the sports seats. What was what was on them? <laughs> but my dad... I've known her for longer than we've been romantically. <laughs> it's fine. Mm. But um, my dad had bought sheepskin seat covers mm. from... I call him my uncle. His name's Uncle Hal. Uh, he worked at a, like, a parts shop. So, um, my dad wasn't, he liked cars, but he wasn't, like, crazy into cars, and he never really brought Did me around like cars. car noises? But we had car people around us. So, my E30 had sheepskin seat covers on the front seat. Sorry, Peter. They were real. They were real. They were like this thick. Yeah. They were super comfortable. I love them. Killed two animals for that comfort. Yeah. And my parents really wanted me to figure out how to drive my car. So anytime one of the licensed drivers, one of my friends, and they all knew how to drive manuals, would come over, my parents would let them drive my car and take me to go learn. Well, this time my friend, Christian, had come over and I was like, I got this. I can do it. He's a grown-ass man. He was a grown-ass man. I was a grown-ass man. <laughs> and I was like, I can drive. And we lived on this road that kind of like dead end. It didn't dead end, but it teed into another road that turned to gravel. And it was just back roads. Back roads, West North Carolina stuff. But right at the end, there was these two straights. It had a little curb. Kind of reminds me of the back straight of Road Atlanta. Because it was like a straight and then a little turn and then another long straight. I drove all the way down there, and there was a church, a rock church at the end. I turned around in the parking lot, and I was like, all right, I made it here, didn't stall it. Let's see how fast this can go. And I immediately just topped out my car as fast as it was. And I think it was like 110. I think I got up to And he, my friend, was tripping out. He was yelling at me the whole time. He was so mad that I was driving so fast. And 
I'm, I don't know. Like, I guess so it was should really... have known that I was going to be a little bit of a speed demon early, early on. But how great is it to have an E30 chassis as your first car and living in Western North Carolina? It only makes sense that not only did I maybe have a little bit of an inclination for driving, I just wanted to go see the top speed of my car, which I think I, I think people do it all the time. Like, I think you get it. Like, I don't think that's weird, no matter who you are. But uh, being able to go for drives per se and it's all curvy back roads i'm in a great chassis vehicle you know it handles great i really got the feel of how a car feels in turn so i i do attribute my passion and maybe a little bit of my ability to that first car so and i still hated it though <laughs> so so what was your your second car so after that um, like your vehicle, not a shared vehicle. What was your second vehicle? My second vehicle I got after... Rebecca, your car, I'm sure, will go faster than 137 miles an hour. <laughs> you just quite have, I'm quite positive. positive that. I mean, I know you said you stopped trying, but... That's a lot. Yeah, no doubt. I, no doubt. Your car probably... I think I've topped out at 137 in my blue car. Yeah, you can... I, but you I, haven't but we haven't out like yeah. I would not top out, and it, it's it's smart because yeah, be safe. Public roads, be safe. Nearly 140 we'll get, we'll miles get that an hour thing is somewhere a lot. Where you can is, do that eventually. That is dangerous. Things could happen. It's I'm just checking your foot temperature <laughs> because <laughs> my Crocs I'll tell you a secret. Melt. Crocs melt. That some bitch is hot right now. Is it? So you can either have no shoes on. I'm gonna move that heater back a little bit. It's 54 degrees in the garage right now. I'm okay. I got my Are you sure? On. Yeah. Okay. I really don't, am. Don't melt your clutch. I won't, I won't freeze All right. Well, well, I'm watching her, people. Don't worry. I won't let her get hurt here. I guess back to the point. I did daily a 95 Eclipse for a while, so I have driven front-wheel drive. How was that? I thought it was badass because oh. it had a sound system, which was, it was also a five-speed manual, um... I've never owned an automatic car. Really? I'm, I, no, I'm really going through it. Mm. No, I've never owned an automatic Man. car. So, so you had the Eclipse. Yeah. That she was not living here when that happened. She was, was away, out west. She was away from me. I was closer to this zone. Um, and then you moved back. No, I got. Oh no. Okay. So I began you're gonna a family. Notice, you're gonna notice a trend here, people. So what happened? You got pregnant with April. Yes. In a, I was married. In a ridiculous turn of events that wasn't supposed to be able to happen. I guess right? if we're you, sharing. You, you weren't people are supposed to be able to become pregnant. I was told I would never be able to and, have kids by my first pelvic By a doctor. Exam. So don't always trust your doctor, people. Uh... And then you got pregnant. And then I got pregnant because I was young and married and living out west. Yeah, so, so you were going to have April. Yep. So what economical family vehicle did you get um, my parents, after that my parents, to help you raise a child in? <laughs> my parents helped me buy a 1999 BMW 323i, which was a sedan. It's an E46 chassis. 2.5 liter inline six, 170 horsepower, 178 foot pounds of torque. Um, I loved that car. I felt baller as hell. Um, at the time, my husband and I could not get a decent loan. We had already bought a truck. It was the F-150 single cab. Um, and we couldn't get a secondary, so we're having a baby and we had a single cab truck and we Not brought, ideal. and we brought April home in our single cab truck and we couldn't get a loan and we couldn't get enough trade in on our, we needed to be, anyway, my parents helped me buy a car with the stipulation that I would pay them back and I paid them back for a while, but then it was just kind of like, you were young. it was young and uh, you know, don't worry about it. Things were said. And then 
I just don't want to bring up all my family drama. Don't do it. I won't. Don't do so, it. Um, so, but so the E forty six I love so much. I wasn't allowed to drive it by my first husband when mm. I had April. Um, our our first our F one fifty ended up having an electrical fire and burning down in the middle of the desert, which is kind of crazy. And so we were back down to one vehicle and living on base. I was in, I was an Air Force wife. My first husband was in the Air Force. He would drive it. He would drive it to work and stuff. So I never got to drive it. And things happen. We left the Air Force. Things, we were young and dumb and disagreed and we got divorced and I got the car, obviously. And I got the kiddo, which was awesome. And I finally got to drive the car. So I really felt like that was the first thing that was mine, like ever. So I loved that car. Like and I you were back loved, here at that point. Finally got back to North Carolina. So you didn't get to operate that vehicle until you came back here, basically. Yeah. So um, there were times I got to drive it at times. It's a five. It was a five-speed manual as well. Um, but it wasn't considered my car, but as things went along, it was my car yeah. back here. Loved that car. Uh, we bought, we got that car when it had a hundred thousand miles and I kept it for 13 years and sold it with 200 and was a bit. it was like 224,000 so, miles. So I think that car was your real beginning of. The love for motorsport. Not to not to fill this with backstory, but that was the first car you autocrossed in. You would take that to the BMW Performance Center and do autocrosses there. Yep. You entered it. It got repainted amazingly by uh, us in this garage so, with the help of Eddie Bell. Yes. Because Cannot. we had fixed all, everything mechanical on the car and... It needed, uh, I, I took it to the car wash and like ripped a whole big chunk of it clear was, coat off of it. Um, it I don't know if the car first had day maybe at been, college. Yeah. It was one of my first days of a semester in college. And Kyle was like, I'll take your car to the car wash real quick and rinse it off for you so you have a nice, clean car to take. Fuck yeah, and he came back and his face was pale and he was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. But your clear coat just peeled up on your hood. And I was like, what? You know? And he's like, yep, come look. And I saw it. This and I was like, this is a big old that's coat. bad. I was like, but big old, you not, didn't not like mean to. It's not like you wrecked it, but you didn't mean to. So yeah. I can't be mad about it. What are we going to do? Like, that was the next thing. I was like, oh, what am I, I going to do with this car? You know, I can't buy, I can't afford to buy a new one. I'm a single mom. Yeah, we were going the to school. At that point, we and, were dating at this point. Yeah, we were. It was, it was a, a year or so. It was definitely a couple years into yeah. our dating, I think. But, but you so, know. and so, then it got an amazing paint repaint. Yeah, we met a buddy. We met Eddie, who uh, I went fishing with just the other day, but we met him through um, our friends at On Target Shooting Range mm -hmm. of all places. So, so we met Eddie through them. And he came over and definitely guided us tremendously on what it takes to paint a vehicle. Uh, got the car painted, new yeah. bumper, new trunk, new wheels, painted put, the wheels. I put the CSL front bumper and the CSL trunk lid on yeah. it. And I put M3, M3 fronts all the way around it. I upgraded the rear brake because... Yeah, we put 330 brakes on it. Well, um, when I upgraded to the M3 fronts and no longer the e-brake mm -hmm. never went big enough. So your dad actually machined a chunk of metal and welded it to my yeah. OE uh, rear so that brakes. Your parking brake would work. And then I upgraded the front brakes to 330 brakes, mm -hmm. which were pretty significantly bigger. Um, and she did that because she was pissed off when I put big brakes on Tacoma that it stopped better than my car. We did do that, yeah. So, yeah, this was really at the beginning of it. We were just dabbling in, like, working on cars. I should have, I should get takes. a timeline out, but I do think yeah, it was it done a, by 2010, yeah, 2011. Yeah, it would be a really interesting thing to see. The, 
So, you know, you repainted the interior trim pieces. Yep. And duplicate and color the dash effects. And all the door cards. All so bass boat trim looking. My. Deleted your your little antenna off the roof. Yeah, we did do that. And then I never had radio. <laughs> no, radio stop. Yeah. So but, you, you lose radio. At but that my, my E46 was Hell Rot Red as well. So I've. And you got I've a special always, version of Hell Rot Red to repaint it, too. I just did, three different colors. I picked um, Japan Red. Yeah, to repaint they it. it. They did it a little I different. I picked a different red, piece. and you could tell just a little bit in the door seals because the whole car yeah. got repainted and red, and then I did that shit has black gold stripes. In it. it was expensive. It was not cheap paint. We were so people. poor. We were so poor. It was at my dad helped pay for it. It was it cost us out of pocket like five grand to repaint that car. It was a lot. But Eddie told us when we were done with it that if we dropped it off somewhere, it would have been probably a fifteen thousand dollar paint job. It was because you painted the roof black. Yeah. And then you had off center stripes that was that alternated to they were black on the hood and the trunk, and then they went the red roof on was the roof. black. It and was then a the gorgeous car. Were red. So um, we got it done painted, and then the Euro Auto Festival was coming up. At the BMW Zentrum. Yep. And you entered your car. Yes. I was so proud of it, y'all. You got so so we went there. She didn't win nothing, and she got That's sick. Right. She was sick. I was, so that so, was my first. Wait, wait, hold I on. I want to talk about my you hot wait, laps. Wait, I want to talk about there, my hot I'm laps. So See, awesome. she getting so excited. It was sick. so that was so the fun. first time that you got to go on hot laps on track. It was stupid. I think that they like violated some insurance policies with it because they, they never, never did, did it again. again. But you could pay like twenty five <laughs> bucks. You go to the performance center and you got to run an E sixty M five and Driving an E ninety M three. They let you drive them, and the E ninety M three was like a little road course thing, and the E sixty M five was a, like a hundred and thirty mile an hour straightaway, and then a ninety degree turn. A fucking nuts. And we both got to do it, and it was cool as hell. And I think that was the day that you were like, I'm going to be a race car driver. <laughs> because I was tripping. you had a show car. And after that, I was, you didn't really want to do car shows anymore. You wanted to drive. Yeah. But, so, do you want to say more about the hot laps before we continue? It was amazing. I, that was it? That was okay. when I fell in it love was with amazing. the... That was when I, I fell in love with the BMW Performance <sighs> Mama Center. was like... I was like, BMW these Performance drivers are amazing. amazing. I remember going, so so they would take you first. There like four people in one of these cars. It was all four doors. It wasn't yeah. two-door M3s. Three wide back in the back when an M3 seats. was an M3, there was not all these different designations for everything. It was the E90 so M3. Was the E90 M3. E60 M5. And I remember getting in a car with Mike Renner... And we were going, like, towards a turn, and I was like, we're, we're, we're done. Ain't gonna There's make it. no fucking way mm -mm. this is gonna make this We're turn. dead. We're totally dead. And then dead. the car hangs a corner, and I was like, These are the best the cars in the whole God. world. I don't know how the <laughs> That's hell what we thought. We're just that like, happened with four the people best. in the vehicle. You were sold on it. The M5 also had the adjustable bolsters. The seats that would, would grab, grab you when you turn. I don't know if anybody's and the shoulder been in an bolsters. E60. Fucking Ooh, crazy. V10, the last NA M cars. Yeah, so, so you did that. So we we you left started getting the sick and you show. left early. She got so that, we left like a the head car cold. Car show went over to the BMW. The car show was at the Zentrum at the time, which is like mm -hmm. right across the street from the Performance Center. And so we took a shuttle bus over the Performance Center, did all this cool driving, headed back over to the show, and they had all European marks. So it was Lamborghini, Ferrari, yeah. Volkswagen, BMW. I can't remember who the mark Just, was that year, but they always have like a a title, yeah, uh, company that they're they're. I am trying to remember. It's really not I think important. it was Volkswagen, but I'm not sure. But it's like any car show, you get divided into classes. They do first, second, and third mm -hmm. for all these different classes. And with the BMWs, they mainly just did it by years. So it was like real vintage, 80s mm -hmm. to early 90s, uh, mid 90s, you know, just something like that. Yeah. And I didn't, we sat through all the awards. I was really, really sick. I had been screaming. I was losing my voice. Yeah, you had a bad and, head cold. I mean, I'm... I'm a little cocky when it comes to my cars. I had the best looking car there. Like, I loved it. In your class, for sure. But it was a, like a... You had people purist. coming by with BMW, like, shirts on. They thought... They with were like, fucking name tags. Like, we work here. 
And they're they going. They made a four door in three. Going, I don't. I they don't didn't make a four making, door in three. Do we make a four I've door M three in the nineties? I made it look. Good. Cause it looked like a four door M three. It really it did. did, and it fucked with people that like know their shit. Like they're BMW executives, and they're like trying to figure out where this car came from. It was cool. And then. But it was heavily modified. We did it, she didn't win nothing. Right? And I was so, like, I was a little so, mad. I was sick and I was grumpy. So I was we, like, so we're like, fuck it, we're going. I'm home. leaving. So she, now. so we packed up and went home. Um, and that was it. And yeah. It was like, okay, okay, cool. That was when it was probably September, a little October? September, or something. And it was like no, late November, December. I got a phone call. I got a you package. You didn't get a phone call. I, I got, got a, a phone package. call you from were you. Gone. You were surveying somewhere. Yeah. Mama was a land surveyor. Back that was my profession. Yeah. And I got, a, I got a box that was it was it was a whiskey bottle size box and it was heavy. Yeah, I, I so her square up I looked like, like a whiskey box, yeah. you know, rectangular, square at the ends, heavy. Yeah, and I'm like, she Did got me a kick ass bottle it was close of whiskey to Christmas. for Christmas time. Yeah, because so I'm um, so I'm um, you thought I, it was scotch. I call her up and I'm like, hey girl, you did you give me a present? To tell me, and she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, did you buy me something? I was like, no, she's like, mm -mm, I, didn't. I don't know what. We're poor. And I'm like, <laughs> well, there's some shit. It's addressed to you, but it got shipped here to my house. I couldn't figure it out. And she's like, well, open it. And, and, see. and I'm still like, it's right. a bottle of whiskey. Well, she's I'd playing only dumb. Been, I'd only been living there for <sighs> not long. Like month six months? I would say six months. So I open it up, and it's fucking a, a marble, marble obelisk. Looks like the vast memorial in Asheville, same state. Or the ginormous one in D.C. Okay, or the big marble obelisk in D.C. It's What's that called? What's that called? The Washington Monument? The Washington Monument, that one. So, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this piece of shit? I don't it's want marble. a big rock. It's, it's big black fucking obelisk thing. And I'm reading it, and it says, Collector's Choice on it. And it's got your yeah. car and your name, and it's all fucking basic. Presented by BASF. Presented by BASF which is for, the perform for the Zentrum. And I'm like, what? Cheers. So we're trying to figure this out, and uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Danny Richardson. Danny Richardson. I'm so proud of myself for remembering And who's the things. other? Is it a Helms? Is uh, it a... Bruce? No. The guy that you, I talked to, yeah, I can't quite remember. remember his name. But anyhow, we're trying to figure out what the fuck this is about, and they're like, "Yeah, we tried to find you guys. She won the Collector's Choice Award because what you did with that car and the restoration and everything is just it, it embodies the heart and soul of what BASF painting is about, which is what we painted the car with, and A it bit. was it was just." So, so here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy. The car, part. the car is worth no dollars. Like oh. it's a two hundred thousand mile, yeah, three it's series. It's like, like four grand on paper. Yeah, at time. I mean, it's just it's it's pretty, but it's not worth anything. No. And so, so what cars won that in the years prior? The one I know. What car won it the year before? Was a Lamborghini Miura. Yeah. So. Like. What the hell? Is that about all the cars before yours were like quintessential milestone vehicles? It was a Lamborghini Miura? I'm and I'm have wanting to, look. to say a Ferrari, maybe a Testarossa or something. Before we'll find it, but but the it list of cars like, before it was like what the fuck? It was how only did, three vehicles. How did this happen before mine? How did? But but we got that thing. She'll post a picture of it up. No, I'm not. I'll let you guys see it. It's cool as hell. People want to see I that. hate showing what I've because, done. Because. I'm not into that. Because, you know, it's just, it's been funny this last little bit because you got all these people like, you know. If, well, I want to say one be, thing about Danny okay. Richardson. The okay. craziest thing about this whole thing is Danny Richardson is, was the representative for BASF, and he was one of the deciding factors on who to give this award to. It was their choice, presented by BASF. Um, and he followed the car through the whole... That's what I was getting at. He was the dealer for the shop that was helping me paint the car. We uh, Eddie Bell came to my house and showed me how to sand, and I would sand, and he would come by afterward and be like, no, yeah. you need to work hard here. So we prepped the whole car here at the house, but it went to a, a professional shop 
And Eddie Bell painted the car. He, I told him I wanted all my trim paint matched. Everybody thought I that wanted, was really stupid. I wanted all the black trim that was like on the windows and Windshield stuff. Windshield wipers. Shiny black instead of a matte black. And um, so that stuff happened at the shop. I did lay the stripes because Eddie was like, nah, you, you lay them stripes how you want them. So I had to lay these uh, different size it's, stripes. It's, it was serious. It's fucked up putting stripes on a vehicle. Because I'll just let y'all know the because bodies, the car's going like this and you're trying to get them straight. It was, fucking it was, hard. That was fun. But we use lasers and all kind of shit to get, oh man. But really Danny difficult. was seeing the car through the whole process and the he, they were just like, who would paint the body molding the same color? Who would paint that shiny black? That's not going to look good. And he told me, he was like, I really didn't think this car was going to look good. He was like, it looks amazing. It is just incredibly beautiful. And I remember him and a student of some uh, painting school. Well, you got it. You got it put at... Uh, yeah, that was later. Was it at McDowell? It was. Uh, no, 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 no. Hendersonville. What's that college out there? Isothermal? No. no. It was the college. In Hendersonville. It's a community college. I don't remember. But it's not McDowell. You got asked to put it in, you know. I did to get to put the car, the car in a trade show for BASF, which was really fun and cool. But I remember them coming by and asking me questions about painting it. And I was able to, like, you know, talk about the experience because it, it was a, a huge learning experience. Yeah, the first time, the mm. first sanding was done by me. Yeah, I was like, I don't know a, where to start. With on an air powered. Dual action sander. And what grit did you use? Eight, 80 grit sandpaper. That's wood. And I grit. had that bitch up off the car. I spooled that thing up to fucking 40,000 RPM. Straight to metal. I went straight to the steel immediately and went, maybe we need to call somebody. Yeah. Because uh, I will I will call somebody if I have to. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and then he came over and... Uh, in the process of painting the car, we became really good friends with Eddie. He's an awesome guy. Super great guy. And uh, it was a process. I don't want to do it again. No, it's not my thing. It's, uh, we'll leave that to the painters. It the was thing, a lot of work. The thing with painting, it's all about prep. And it then... It took three months. This is their three-month process. And this is a huge garage. Like, it's not real huge what's up here. Well, there's two bays here and then a big workspace work over space. this way down and off camera that way and my little four-door sedan took up the entire was, garage was from we worked bumpers, on it every night. interior parts because like he said I deleted the antenna on the top so I had to take off all of the headliner, headliner everything, every, everything fiberglass pulled down. That shut. yeah we did it was it was it was fucking it wh was so much work that I didn't want to fucking drive it because it was too custom. That was the thing. It so, was too custom. So the car was so nice. I went on a BMW drive with my friends to Maggie Valley. And we were stopping at a Mustang car show. And on the way there, I hit a squirrel on the interstate. Now on I-40, uh, Interstate 40 right past Asheville, there's a section where you're kind of in the woods. There's no fences or anything. And, you know... I got a little freaking squirrel, decided to run his ass across three lanes of traffic and karate chop my BMW squirrel. bumper. Rocky and Bullwinkle squirrel. It was serious. And it, it, it literally, um, yeah, I had she to called see me up and told me she hit a squirrel and I was like, so, fuck what, you know? I was like, no, it tore up my bumper because my bumper was a CSL front bumper and it had carbon fiber splitters up on the front. What, are they splitters? Yeah. The little things? Uh -huh. Yeah, they were carbon fibers. It took one of them just like off and broke it the bumper. It disintegrated the shit. Like, it just horribly. So now we got to repaint a bumper and put stripes and back on. And you have to line the stripes so back paint up it red, let off that cure. the car because it's an aftermarket bumper and they're all like this. Oh. So you're trying to lay stripes while it's not Fucking on the car. Oh, I had to put it on the car, do the stripes, pull it off so the car, much. get it painted. I was like, I never want to drive this car again. And shortly thereafter... Taylor, this is like... Toilets. Yeah. 14 years ago? I want to say 2013. Not 14. How old do you think we are? We've been, we've been together for like 45 years. Yeah, so. I'm not that old. 
not 14 years ago? Mm -mm. 10 years ago? I know ago? we got the car years. painted by 2011. I'm then pretty sure this happened in Rap 2013. Back then. My, my own raps were horrible. 2013. And I'll be honest with you. And then I got pregnant in 2014 and I didn't drive it for like a whole year. We're not, we're not big vinyl rap people. Vinyl rap wasn't cool then. Nope. Wasn't even like a thing. Mm -hmm. Like the vinyl wraps you saw from 2013, those white vans and stuff still have like faded colors like all over them. Like that shit was not yeah. perfected yet. It was not really even an option. Yeah. Uh, it, so, it just wasn't. It was cheaper for us to paint. So it. you fixed. We fixed it. It was we like 500 bucks for another bumper. Repainted yeah. it. Eddie helped us out again. We got it all done. But at that point, you really were like, I'm not taking it out because it. it's going to get yeah. fucked up. I don't know what is happening. Here. And we uh, we had a long period of you not driving a whole lot. And I got pregnant. And then you got pregnant. I drove it one last time when I was like, and Geo really again. Pregnant. She wasn't supposed to be able to have. Yeah, we weren't supposed to have Geo. Yeah, that second miracle baby. So we had another miracle. That one's baby. even like more of a miracle. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, a whole other story. So you, but see, so she had April. And she got a BMW. And then she had Geo. And she wasn't doing much with the car. She started, when she don't drive a whole lot, she starts getting sad because she's a very big car person. So she started going out and going on drives. Okay. She was pregnant with Geo. She had April in the car. The Didn't impeller on the water pump failed. After I just and I'm changed on top the water pump. Like, we're fixing everything. And the impeller on the water pump failed. It had 200-something thousand miles on it. And I was like, fuck its noise. Let's get you something that will last and is dependable and you can enjoy. Because I don't want you breaking down on one of these back roads and having to damn go knock on Deliverance's door to use a phone to call me. Carrying my infant no, child. There's, you know, cell phones don't work everywhere. No, at that time, cell phone reception in Western North Carolina was it's pretty It's still spotty. shitty in a lot of places I mean, that people drive. Is when but, it was uh, 2015. So then, after... BMW Performance Center driving schools, BMW Performance Center autocrosses, Club all these members, BMW friends, Sand Lapper Chapter, all this shit. Like, literally, I wanted your to entire driving life was BMW. Yes. We looked at what we were going to get. There was a new vehicle. We were going to buy a new Brand vehicle. Brand new vehicle. And Could what, not afford what can an we M2. buy? M2s, we just did they exist? They did. We just They were 60 grand and we couldn't afford them. They were 60. Was it an M2 then or was it, was, it a 1M? Uh -uh. No, honey. It was an M2. Okay, so the M2s must have just come out. Because we could have got a 240, but it had like no amenities. Yeah. And I was like, this is not what so I So we were looking at what to get and we're... It's all commercial. What to do. And, and he was like, you know, you should try out those new Mustangs. I was like, oh, I just saw a commercial. Jeremy Clarkson's They're talking very high on them. This gorgeous. is the time Jerry Clarkson's a, a reviewing them Jerry? on. Jerry? Jeremy Clarkson Jer is reviewing them on uh, Top Gear. Yeah. So we went I was went like, they do look really good. You test drove uh, Magnetic. Mm -hmm. S550. It must have been 2015, Lawrence, because these cars, it was 20, the 2016 cars were on the lot because you ordered a 2017. So what happened was I had Geo in March of 2015. I didn't want to drive, so I didn't drive for like eight months. And I was going on a couple drives here and there, and I just still wasn't really happy. Then winter time came, so I didn't drive it. And it was about March of 2016, and we started to. I was like, I want a new car. I want an M. I want an M. And I, that was going to be like an E90. We were looking at like used M3s. We were looking at used M3s. They were still 40. Couldn't afford. Yeah, really well, expensive. we could, but it was a used car. So getting the loan was going to be different. Mm -hmm. And we had never purchased a new vehicle. So I think we probably could have gotten into one. We just were like, probably. no, we can't afford that. Money. You know, but um, 
I wanted, I really wanted a BMW and just nothing fit the bill. I couldn't get into an M. Yeah, and I think we, M235i was as close as we could get. It, and that was really pushing our budget. Yeah, and that like, car really. didn't have a lot of creature comforts. And we were terrified of the maintenance. Even though it would that have a thing, maintenance plan, yeah. we were just very terrified of And I was wrenching breaking. pretty regularly at that time, but it was still like, there's things on computers. You the newer the cars software. you just can't repair. You know, you have to have a laptop out there and all. You know, it was intimidating. And, you know, what are you going to do? So. I saw the Mustang. I was like, that does look good. And he was like, hey, you should, uh, maybe we should go look at those Mustangs. And I was like, you know, I do think they look really good. Let's go check them out. So we went to our local Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. I was dressed with my BMW shirt. I had my BMW earrings. Yeah. I did not want to be there. I did not want to drive a Mustang. I was like, this is this not was, what uh, I'm going to This want. was, uh, so, so when we buy anything that's more than 20 bucks, it's like, research let's the research the hell out of it. And then, yeah. if there's, I want there to be no question. So, if there's anything like, yeah, let's go try that out and... And make, make sure, sure it's it not sucks. what we want. Yeah. So that's pretty much what we were doing. We were going to go and we were going to test drive this Mustang just to rule it out. Be like, cause on paper, this fits the bill everywhere. 400 plus horsepower, V8, sounds good, looks, looks good. Looks really good. Um, that's what sold me. I was like, that is everybody, good looking. Everybody's raving over this new suspension it was, geometry. It was the so, first independent rear suspension yeah, on the so, Mustang. So we went and. Test drove the magnetic performance pack. Basically, it was this car. Nuts and bones silver. of Hank, dark but in a, in a really dark silver color. Yep. And you drove it for like 20 minutes. And I couldn't stop and smiling. And you were like, this is the shit. I Gio was it. in the back in the car seat and he fell asleep. Within a mile of yeah. leaving. It was the vibration from the V8 in the back, I guess, yeah. put him out. And Gio wasn't, he he was an okay sleeper, but he definitely didn't like car rides. Mm -hmm. He would get real antsy. So literally, like, put him in wow. this car and he fell asleep within a mm -hmm. mile. And I was like, and so, I loved it. I mean, as soon as I put my foot down, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> that is something. <laughs> would you look at that? <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was pretty so, awesome. <laughs> I do. So I she's do like, I really like this, right? <laughs> so we get amazing. back, we get back, and then I'm talking to. We're like, well, we still can't afford it. Who was the, it. Who we gonna... buy the car from? It was uh, Chris. His name was Chris. Chris Mean Mead. Means. 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 Meads. Me. It's M E A something s. I think it was Mees. Chris Mees. Mees. Okay. I think so. We're close. We're close. So, so we. We told him, like, we were, I really like Okay, it. so, Ron, why we didn't get a Camaro? Because fucking there was no V8s anywhere around where we were at. There was no V8 Camaros. And then we found one that was an SS. I think it was the 1LE. And they were like, well, I don't know if you we're going to let you test drive you this test one. Drive it. And we dealt with that fucking bullshit when we were ago. test driving cars a ways back with a Civic Type R. Like, it was a... Goddamn ass and Martin. It was just an SI. Was that SI? It was yeah. Just an Shut SI. the fuck up, Honda. Like your shit's that nice. We were young. ridiculous. We they were, were like, like, "Well, you can test drive this regular Honda four banger, but you can't test drive this SI because we don't know if you're a serious buyer." Shove that up your ass, okay? So, we're not anyhow. He's not so yelling not at you, it. Ron. Don't take it that way. No, not you, Ron. Honda he obviously shit. has so, some pent up animosity about feeling like a loser when we go into the dealerships. It's very I bothersome. Mean, I don't like being treated that way. So, and the and the Ford dealership was like, Oh yeah, you want to take it? Go ahead. So so I'm <laughs> we I'm didn't talking even have to, to Chris. Take a salesman. Yeah, I'm talking to Chris and I'm like, look. She needs to know how this car handles. And he's like, Okay, well, what do you need? I said, Well, we, I want to take it down Salute Amount and back. Yeah. And Which is a like, very curvy, kind of high road. speed area. And he's like, well, how, how long do you need? And yeah. I was like, well, I don't know. How long can we take it out for? And he was like, I'll let you have it for like three or four hours. Yeah, a few That's hours. It. Deal. Sounds good. So we went back on a Saturday. I think I don't remember what day it was. I think it was Saturday. Just me and her. 
And they gave us the car with a full tank of gas. And we're like, just have it back in uh, by the end of the day or something. And it was like 1 p.m. and they closed at 5. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So you drove that thing down Highway 9 and slewed a mountain and all over the usual roads that she goes on for like quick jaunts out. Yep. And it was... Uh, Loved it. I remember her like downshifting and getting back in the torque band on that thing and doing the same. She was like, can you feel the power? She's just oh, <laughs> going crazy. Because you got to remember, she had 200 horsepower when it was new. E46. Yeah, 170. 170. And now she's got 435. So lots of more power. He didn't cool the seats, reverse camera. It had all the shit. It had more amenities than the BMW you had. You could even that get we could, like you, you couldn't, you even, couldn't get even get it. most of the you shit. You couldn't get cooled seats so, in the BMW. So that was just a big deal. And then we had heard some things. We were like, well, what about a Camaro? I don't know. But uh never really been big big Chevy people anyway. And they didn't have a lot of the, the the view is not good out of them, we had heard. And they didn't have any V8s around here to, to test drive. Except for that one. And, you know, they're acting one like that's fucking... Test drive. <laughs> I mean, I know, didn't even know. That's the champagne room. They're like, they're like, you were just calling well, around about them. I don't know, you know. And I liked, and then, I liked the way the Mustang looked better at yeah, the time. Yeah, the Mustang's a good looking car. I don't think the Camaros look good until you get, like, the top, top trim level. Nowadays. Um, I don't know. I think the Camaro is a really good looking car. I just think at the time, I really liked the Mustang. I still think my Mustang's just gorgeous. Thanks for good looking. But um, I, compared to like the 2020 GT, I think the Camaro looks better. I don't I don't like the facelift on the Mustang. No, I like the old one. So, um, you know, just... And when I did that test drive, we both were like, hey, we want this car, but we're going to have to save up. Probably like six months to be able to yeah, get Yeah, we down still payment. had the BMW, right? Yep. And then, uh, and I they, told, didn't, they didn't want it on a trade. No, it was too old. They said, well, if it's more than four years old, we don't want it. Yeah. At that dealership. Right. And we, we went and talked about it and like, we're going to save and do this and that. And then, uh, one of my buddies at work heard that we were going to get rid of the car. And he was like, I want it. And I said, well, man, we need like, we need like eight grand for the car with the paint job and everything on it, which isn't fair market value, but with how much work was in it. And he was like, done. Where do I, I where it. do I sign up? And so he bought the car that allowed us to pay off the rest of the note on the Tundra. It was still owed on it. And then have a little bit of a down payment for the blue car. So you bought that brand new, right? She had a 200 and some thousand mile BMW. Brand new Ford Mustang, one of the best sports cars going at that time. And the first thing you did with it, I think it was like not even a month after you had the car, you went to Cars and Coffee. Oh yeah. At Michelin. Yeah, it was like a couple weeks. Right? But a brand new car, I think it's got a damn fucking temp tag on it. And that's all your BMW friends, all your Zentrum friends, all your Performance Center friends, all the Sand Lapper people. They see us and like, oh, Ryan, how you doing? How's it going on, man? We're so, we're so glad you're here. Where's your car? I got a and new car. And she's like, I got a new car. Yeah. What'd and they're, you get? Oh, man. What model? What'd you get? What oh, model did you get? And she's like, it's over there. It's the blue car. I bought a Mustang. And they were like, oh, why? I got like, so many for like fucking oh. real. Like you want a Kyle rant here, Lawrence <laughs> and James. Like we just spent forty some grand on a brand new car, From and my... I got these motherfuckers acting like. You lost a bet. They were like, oh. It's really what it felt like. What happened? I, I was so Did sad. you lose a bet? And like all of her buddies, like every friend she had ever made in the car community ousted Because I was a BMW She's got person. a friend that lives up here. Yeah. Used to go on drives and shit. 
He stopped talking to her. Yeah. Uh, everybody. It's like you got dumped. I did. And that's when, and I'm sorry if you drive a BMW now, and I'm not talking about my buddies. Okay? My buddies. The IHCP does not camp here. But a vast majority of y'all Euro drivers, you smell your own farts. Okay? And I don't think you don't even that know means. you do it. But leaving that world and trying to remain friends with people who drive Euros is fucking disgusting. It is the most ridiculous thing. Like, the, the they disowned... It would be like if you had Catholic parents and you told them you were homosexual. And they were like, well, get the fuck out because we don't want you anymore. <laughs> That's how it was. Like, it everybody was. was like... It was funny. You drive a Mustang now? They felt sorry You're not me. welcome here. We are so... Like... Like you had a fucking mental disorder or something. Like you're retarded. And I'm now and, a leper. And, and it was leprosy. it was crazy, man. I'm talking every motherfucker, every one of them was like, oh, and it was like they weren't all together. Like they don't walk around. No, like, it was like it's not like John Travolta like, in Greece. Like, they're all car, they were walking like, around oh. doing a little dance at the oh. fucking Zentrum or at the at the Michelin. Uh, cars and coffee. Cars and coffee event. It was separate. Every one of them. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? And most of them were driving like rusted ass shitbox fucking cars. Weren't like a new BMW. It was like an old piece you of shit fucking. Down so my car. Hard. I couldn't bring my BMW here, so I'm here in my Toyota Camry because my car's fucking broke and I don't know how to fix it. Those people. And they were like, Oh, you got rid of your your old BMW for your a new $3, car. Your three thousand dollar high My mileage God, maintenance nightmare. So, it wasn't bad, and we stayed on top of maintenance, but it, it was still, bad. It, it was still kept was, breaking down. And I got nothing against the brand, and I got nothing against most of the people, okay. but it's like that. So the worst BMW and Porsche drivers, y'all got to Cut that shit out. So, I think that added the fuel to the fire for you because you're like, well, fuck it, man. I don't need to drive. So I these only BMWs. did driving events down at the BMW Performance Center, and <clears throat> I knew inherently I wasn't going to be able to bring my Mustang down there. Like, you're only allowed to bring Mini, BMW, or Rolls Royce. Yeah, it had to, to be a BMW product. So you're out. Crosses, you're which, out the club, which is which understandable. I, I don't did, disagree I with totally that. I totally feel that's fine. I think that's 100% justified. So I knew that I was still going to want to do... I was like, now I have a car that can do stuff. Like, I want to do stuff. And... I had driven my BMW at the local Highland Sports Car Club autocross a handful of times previously and not done real well, but not done bad. But I mean, my car had all season tires and. Yeah, why don't I set it? It, it was not set well. I gotta go. At all. If y'all want this to continue, I gotta fill this back up. What time is it? Oh, it's getting late. It ain't bad. Well, nine. I got nothing to do tomorrow. Is it nine or eight? It can't be nine. Must be eight. I haven't fixed that clock yet. So I was like, let me check out that Highland Sports Car Club again and I'll, I'll do some auto crossing. And I was like, I also have a drag car because everybody was like, oh, Mustangs only go straight. And I was like, well, that means I can do a drag race too. So I took the car to Shady Side. I started doing auto crossing with Highland Sports Car Club really kind of got my butt kicked in autocross just learning the car the car comes with two 255 275 19 like staggered setup on pirelli's the pirelli p0 nero summer tire they sucked and they were way too narrow for all the horsepower that the car can put down um initially i felt I could feel that the car felt disjointed, I guess. It's, you know, it just didn't feel like a solid car. It felt like the front wheels were driving and the back wheels were doing their own thing. 
So I started doing some upgrades on it. Oh gosh. And you know, I've had problems with the car. I'm not going to say it's been 100% maintenance free, but Ford did take care of me and fix the car within the first 5,000 miles. Um, I was having a weird, <clears throat> I was having a weird issue and the code kept popping up and it was a cam sensor, I believe. What are you talking about? When the car kept popping the code. Are we off? Are we ranting about just, your ousting of BMW? I'm totally not talking about that anymore. Okay. I get it. I was there. I was a BMW snob and I, I understood. You don't know until you're not in the club. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think no matter who it was, if somebody popped up with a brand new vehicle, I would have been happy for them. Like, no matter what make it was. But it was a cam position, camshaft position sensor code I kept getting on the car. And the car was doing some weird lurching under accelerate. I was just like, I don't know what's happening. It took a while to figure out. But eventually I figured out the car only had three quarts of oil mm. and an eight-quart oh, system. Now. And yeah. at Ford. You broke. And I was like, cool. I want a new motor. You're going to go ahead. And we wanted a new car. I did want a new car. I was like, these American cars are all about numbers matching. Yeah. And now the number on the motor is not going to match the number on and the And they VIN. said that didn't do that anymore. I didn't know they don't do that I anymore. I didn't know they didn't do that anymore. But they were like, no, really we don't do that anymore. A, uh, a whole new vehicle. But. but they were like, yeah, we'll put a new motor in it. And when they put the new motor in it, I went ahead and bought the power pack mm -hmm. from Ford, which is a GT350. GT350. Uh, cold air intake because it's just a throttle body. Yeah, it's an open intake on the 350s, like a cold air on the GTs. It's a box, like normal intakes, and then also a bigger uh, throttle body. It goes from an 82 millimeter to a 80, mm -hmm. 88 millimeter. I don't remember. I don't think I have that right. I think it's 87. I don't, yeah, 87. I think that's right. Um, so a bigger throttle body, which lets more air in, and then a tune, obviously. So and it tuned for 93. It's not a dry sun. Well, <laughs> no. It is a, the, the variable valve timing is adjusted by oil pressure. And that's what was getting all jacked up. It was. The it was cams wild. didn't know where they needed to be. It was real crazy when that shit was happening. So. What? So they, they, they did fixed put a new it. motor in it. It they took a They knocked us a couple of months payment off. Yeah. It was it was a little sour. It was not fun. Uh, I don't think you anybody, didn't have a car for like a month and a half. It was like something. a month of like not having it and I was really, really sad about it. But they did take care of it and when I got the car back there was actually a couple little issues, but they actually towed it back, got it fixed. I mean Dealing was, with the dealership when your car is broke is never fun, but they honestly didn't make it as painful as it could have been. No, they did good. So did. I couldn't that was complain. That Asheville Ford. I couldn't uh, complain the tech too there bad about that. And had that was, an engine builder do the whole thing. Had, couldn't even tell that it had been swapped, honestly. I mean, there's no damage on the vehicle. Really, really clean engine swap. I, was, I mean, put the power they pack two on. Then, uh, the tune didn't take. They flatbedded the car back, mm -hmm. retuned it again. Finally, it took uh, Lawrence. It was an oil level problem, but that uh, that fucked up the oil pressure, and the can it would stutter at low RPM because there was no oil pushing the cams where they needed to be at low RPM. It was RPM. so weird. It was funky. It would it would fix rocket. itself on the high. Sometimes range. it would just rocket it would, it like, like out of nowhere. Out of it would like but, and uh, then and then like. Hold yeah, you back it, under throttle, like you'd they, be on throttle, and it would yeah. just cut power. Well, once they was, figured out that it didn't have any oil in the system, and we hadn't done the oil change yet, I mean, it only had like hadn't even two thousand miles on it. They, they were like, were like okay, uh, okay, we'll pull the motor. We'll, we'll do. That. Um, they didn't have a loaner. They didn't give a. We we didn't really need one, but they didn't offer they it at our dealership. These are things we look for now when we're buying vehicles. We, didn't, we didn't know, know we were such shit. noobs. We were like, we bought a new vehicle, so we wouldn't have to do any of this, but. Never had bought but they, a new they did good with it. Uh, got the car fixed. It hasn't been back in the shop since. Mm -mm. Hasn't had any mechanical <clears throat> issues at all. 
Uh, not that it has a ridiculous amount of miles on it. I mean, it's only got like 30,000 miles yeah, on it. Yeah, I'm waiting for a wheel bearing because that tends yeah, to be the thing. Yeah, wheel bearings are supposed to go out, especially with what you do with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really waiting to just notice no, a no one wheel. But... No one checked the oil because it was so new. Everyone just assumed. I that didn't is, check it. I was like, That well, is I mean, my most embarrassing why moment. Why the fuck would it but... need oil? I would. I didn't. I and was it like, didn't leak out. It wasn't like there was oil there was on the ground. There was never like a spot. We were like, oh, it must have burned maybe it there's up. an oil leak. Weird. It never burnt oil. It never dropped oil. It never did anything. And I just camshaft position sensor. I would have never thought it was oil. I didn't even yeah. think. And I do have a dipstick. I actually have a, a mechanical, you know, handheld, you know, you check it with your your dipstick you think with your dipstick jimmy yeah. so um so i am so things. embarrassed i never yeah. pulled it like so, never thought about it so the mustang was autocross and autocross and autocross and then uh, i think did katie invite you to that hpdi was how that happened yeah you, you got invited to a michelin women in drive event in 2018 and so that I got was the car. really the beginning of like the next step. No, starting to know people the above you in different areas and like yeah. what I want to do. I had started my Instagram when I had my BMW, but I was just like not like a big deal. Like it was just like I would put pictures up yeah. here and there. I didn't know what I was doing. When I got the Mustang and started autocrossing and Kyle was photographing it, now I had a place to put all these cool pictures of my Mustang autocrossing and I really put a lot of thought into like all my comments. Like if you are bored and want to go through my Instagram, like I have haikus. Yeah, they're still there. I have raps. I have <coughs> songs. Like I would. And you can look up Ryan's 323i and you, that car will pop right up the red BMW. Yeah. Piece of cake. But you know, the Instagram car domain, it's all helped there. me grow to like the rest of the nation kind of car world and I really connected with a lot of <coughs> other car girls and Mustang yeah. drivers and we got the car in July of 2016 and in 2018 like May or maybe April I got invited to a Michelin Women in Drive program well they where they were hosting 20 ladies for like four days and we were gonna get a tour of all the Michelin plants. We were going to get to do some test driving at the Michelin Lawrence Proving Ground. And we were also going to get like educated on tires and stuff. And I had met. You had no idea. You, she called me up and she was like, I don't know why I'm here. I did it. These people are amazing. And I'm just I a was the loser. Driving an autocross car. I don't know what in the hell I is was going on. I was totally no the outcast. But it was my friend. But you met everybody there, right? Yeah. You met. So so that was really your first time hanging out with Johnny. I had met Johnny Amy. previously through the BMW CCA club. Yeah. Johnny Valencia. And he worked for Michelin at the he time. Was marketing and something? what I think happened is they had 20 ladies. And I think um, a couple ladies dropped out. And because I got it. I got invited like. A couple weeks before the event so I think yeah. I was like back up I tell myself that but I don't know and um, when I got there there were car girls that I had been idolizing for over a year you know like on social media like Amy Shackleford, Shackleford with which is petrol girl um, Amber Blonigan which used to run her own uh, like high-end sports car shop I mean there was just it would, <laughs> Sheena. Sheena Punk. Race there, car driver. There was so many people. Whole bunch of really I was cool just people. like, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, Mila Bimmer was there, which yeah. I, being an old BMW girl, had known her through her uh, yeah. social media. So I was starstruck and so nervous, but really just stupid happy to be there. Like, I didn't realize this was like a networking thing. Like, I was just like, cool. Fun activity. I'm gonna have a yeah. good time, but I made a lot of lasting connections. That's where I met Katie Ellison yeah. from. At the time, she worked at the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green. Um, I've met, gosh, just so many ladies there. There was um, Sierra Tremble, which is a stunt car driver. Perky, which is uh, Susan Perkisher, which is also a, a stunt car driver. Yeah, um, big name. Cat. Who are the 
the the Porsche drives a purple Porsche GT3 or something. Um, Is that Amber Vonnegut? No. She's up, she's up north. I can't remember her name right now. Jeanette? I don't know. There was a lot of heavy hitters there, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, and everybody was oh. like, oh, this is cool. Anyway, I met like and so many ladies. And you guys did, they, you guys did karting, right? We did do karting. And what happened? That was karting? my first time karting ever. Never karted before. Never And what happened? Karted. Mama brought the fury. I just, I just karted. People were like. I just drove. So it was you and Johnny and who else was on your team? Leslie Haas. Leslie Haas. And y'all got second? We got second place to Sheena. Yeah. Who was the actual <laughs> race car driver. Who was but, racing uh, in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series at yeah, the time. She races for Michelin Pilot Sport Challenge now in a McLaren MP4. Yeah. So uh, so that happened. And, and why we're talking about that is later on. You had an HPDI, which is a high performance driving instruction that was happening at National Corvette Museum. And I don't know if maybe they didn't have enough people or if Katie just shared it. And you're like, man, that kind of looks fun. But that was your first. On track. Take a ever. car on track. That was my first time on track. At National ever. Corvette Museum in Hank. I didn't have a race car. I did the track cross first, and then I came back for the oh, HPDI. Oh, that's right, the track cross. Track cross was where we kind of had just a section of track, and when it was straight, they put up some chicanes so you couldn't, like, top yeah, speed it. Yeah, um, That was my first, and you were one at a time on track. No other cars on track. Yeah. So that was my first experience on track, and I really enjoyed it, and I was like, yeah, this is my jam. And then I came back for their HPDI program, and I, again, I just want to go back to like the women Michelin drive. I met so many ladies that I'm still in contact with. When I still go to motorsports events, I still see these ladies. These are oh, connections yeah. that I've made. And, you know, you keep up with them through their Facebook or their Instagram. So, you know, don't don't ever take those connections for granted and, and cherish the, the good people that you meet along the way. Um, and then, so when I did the HPDI program, my instructor was Brian Souders, which was a GT350 driver. And it was me and one other guy, and he drove a 300, is it a ZX or SX? ZX, 300 ZX, ZX. Ni Nissan. Completely analog car. And for the HP HPDI program, they really focus on educating you about track etiquette, um, flags, there's a lot of in-class time, and then on track it's lead follow. And the instructor kind of gets a feel for the student's level of competency behind the wheel on track and tends to drive whatever they can. And I'm going to tell you, we were we were one of the fastest groups out there on the yeah, track. Yeah, Brian Sowers was your instructor. Yeah, we were. In a GT350. So I'm following a GT350, I'm in a GT, and then behind us is the 300ZX. And it was like the last session of the day. I'm getting worn out, having a blast, so much fun. And we go into a turn and I just hear like that tiger screeching. And it was the first time I had ever like, just didn't know what was happening. Like I just really felt out of control. I didn't feel like I could communicate to anybody. You know, I just felt, very scared, I guess is the word. And I look up in my rear view and the 300 ZX has spun out. Mm -hmm. He like downshifted and just, just, just spun out. Didn't hit nothing. Didn't go off no, track. No damage. No damage. And I'm just like, what do we do? That was scary. What if he had been closer? Cause we had been getting really close throughout the day and practice passing and passing, like doing like, just, it freaked me out and made me realize, oh, there are dangers on track. And I was like, I just. That was it. She did an interview. I just was like, nope. With Katie after that. That's yeah. in one of their National it's, Corvette Museum it's magazines. It's in Sports and, Car, or what's it? American Sports Car Magazine? American and, Sports and Car Magazine? And you were magazine. like, not doing not, that again. Not going back on track. I'm good. And, I'm good. And she was like fucking Ricky Bobby and Talladega Nights after the wreck. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. She drove home because we only took the car. We didn't trailer it. So we took the car back home. She was driving like fucking under the speed limit the whole way back. I'm like, what are you doing? 
And oh she had, nice. she didn't want to go. She didn't want to drive fast. She didn't want to do the next autocross. We had got to, home. Had to force her to go to the next didn't autocross. Didn't want to go to the autocross. It took her like three laps to finally shake it off at that autocross. I was like, you got to drive. It's just kind of. He stabbed me in the leg. Stabbed her in the leg. He's like, you ain't paralyzed, Rick Bobby. You can drive. And, and. <laughs> And, and she snapped out of it. I did. But didn't really want to go back on track until we had a car that was safe with a cage. And I was like, that's not going to happen for me. And we that's were like, when can we afford that? I don't know. So, so that was summer 2018. Auto, yep. So she's autocrossing Hank. Doing it, doing it, doing it. Finished and then, with 2018. Um, we thought maybe it was a possibility. But what we should do is go see... Who's doing what and where and whatever. And we went to a NASA event. 2019, I didn't do anything. The whole year. We had a teenage daughter that needed yeah, a lot more right. attention. We had and to yank she April just back on needed, the tracks. She needed her parents. She really needed a lot more involvement. I didn't feel comfortable focusing on anything that I wanted. I just... We just wanted to be parents. Yeah, so, so we did. 2019, I didn't do nothing. We shopped. We did. That's what we did. That's what April we got, we got into competitive guns. shooting. More. And for the almost entire thing. year, yeah, we used to shoot all the time. We did. We used to go to on-target shooting range once a week. And uh, we, uh, I didn't think, we bought you a P365 SIG. April helped me break it in to make sure it worked before we left the shooting range. We we purchased it from what we buy all our guns from on-target. And, uh. April shot that 9mm pistol and was like, oh my god. She had shot 22s before, but something about a little bit bigger caliber or whatever. She was like, I, I absolutely loved it. She I was shaking. A, I think there's the a control thing. I think she needed control yeah. in her life and so, firing a gun gave it to her. So, and made her feel a little We did that for almost so a we, year. Yeah, like Every really class we that. could do, every event we could do we joined uh virtual defense tactical down in old fort which is run by our friends we didn't know we were even going to start that uh we still belong there we went there saturday uh april will post a video up at some point of our our shooting after not shooting for almost a year because ammo prices are ridiculous right so, so but we went so we did that for like a year you're almost, right almost a year it was like um September. I think I always kept thinking about. I was like, man, I really miss driving. I really miss going and. Well, we met car with stuff. Ted. We met with Ted Theodore. I thought it was after that. We haven't bought a car yet because he was no. like, "You got to get a car." So it was like I think September. I had I think I had been thinking about driving like the whole time, and then September they announced the one lap of America for 2020. That's right. And I was like. I'm fucking doing that. I was like, I'm not, I need to get back out there. I want to do this. And I mean, one lap is a freaking bucket list. If, I mean, want to do that forever. I was like, I'm signing up. And I put my deposit down. I was like, doing it. And it's not like a, do a dollar. It was, it was a lot of money deposit. And I was like, we're doing it. And then we spent my birthday in Charlotte because you had a work thing. And while you were doing your work thing, I went and bought a helmet. Oh, yeah. And I bought some uh Yeah, you Nomex. did buy all the safety gear before we had a car. I yeah, that. I bought my... And I was like, no, this is really happening. 2020, I'm getting into racing. Like, I, I'm not taking a year off. I'm going crazy. This is not what I want to race. Well, something happened behind the scenes. We had a loss of a family member that really... No. That was that? It wasn't a loss. It was a diagnosis. Well, it was something that... Not only was April it, needing a lot of attention, need, my parents, my father's health was deteriorating, and that was when he was later diagnosed with ALS. But at the time, his health deteriorated significantly in that year. It yeah. had been deteriorating since 2008, and he was misdiagnosed. But in 2019, it, it went really down, like... Real like, and he was well. He was born in sixty one, so he was fifty eight years old. So not um, ready to go yet. Like young. But that was a big moment. Should have had a long, long life. life ahead of him. 
We can't wait. Because I was like, no, I want to do it We don't now. know what's going to happen race. next year. I want to race right Five now. day plan, people. Five well, day plan. We're, we're figuring that out just in this year. So, um, Today. I bought all, bought all of my safety equipment. And I didn't even know she was doing that shit either. She was supposed to be going and looking. Yeah. And we came back. She was like, so, so I don't need anything for Christmas this year. They gave me a free shirt. Yeah. You damn right they should have gave you a free shirt. <laughs> so, so you had your Nomex, your mm -hmm. helmet, your shoes, your gloves. You had everything. Well, I had, I believe I had done the motorsport for the masses. And they were like, you're such a good driver. And, you know, you're the, you're just whipping that heavy horsepower and you're Maybe just Maybe you did. Really you did motorsport it. for the masses and the accelerating change. Of well, it. I did the motorsport for the masses, bought all the safety gear, and then I was like, I'm ready to get on track. And I saw the accelerating change as a great opportunity to get involved with all my car girls out on track and in a comforting environment, drive road Atlanta. I mean, yeah. I didn't realize where Atlanta was as dangerous as it was when I drove it the first time. I was like, yeah. yeah. When I drive track, all I see is the edge of the track. I don't see anything past that. Like, now that I've driven CMP and I can see all that runoff, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe we could just try sending it here. But when I'm driving on track, there's always boundaries. But, so I got to drive road Atlanta in with all the ladies and I was like, yeah. And I had an amazing instructor. That was probably yeah, Michael Lawrence. That's probably what He's really the man. between motorsport for the masses and Michael Lawrence. Those two experiences there, I really felt like yeah. you're I need like, to be on track. I have track. to do this. This is where I need to be. I really do. I was like, this is this is where I want to be. Yeah. So and we then, decided to buy a car. Yeah. We didn't know what. We didn't. Right now, I she liked Mustangs. Did. This is too much money to cage out and put on track. I would have loved. I so, still would love. To honestly, take and y'all like, if you're beating her on lap times, just know the fast car is still in the driveway here. We're in the garage. I'm glad I have my own shit That's talker. Right. I got my own hype man, y'all. Smack. He does. But we went to a NASA event at Roebling Road. Raceways at Roebling Road Raceway mm -hmm. RR. In January, Roebling. Because they do wheel to wheel racing, and that's what you thought you wanted to do. And we went there. They were the only ones that had a Mustang class race. They have group. spec iron Mustangs. And we went to see that, and we saw all the spec classes. And they have American iron. We had already researched all this. But nobody in the southeast runs American Iron. Maybe down in Florida they do, but not really right here. Yeah. Because, and all the and they were a bunch of good old boys, good drivers, but just met them just and just just felt down to earth real guys. Around them. Uh, who is it? Michael Moore. Robert Miller. Robert Miller. We still talk to Robert all the time and Michael about S one ninety seven Mustang stuff. I mean, you're not doing NASA racing now, but at the time. Spec iron car, that's what we want. So what's it need to be? An 05 to 09, or an 05 to 2010 Mustang. So we start looking. And it's basically... I looked for months. You're not getting any younger. We got to get one. We don't know what's going to happen next year. Life's too short. You know, we're not... We don't have the money, but we don't not have the money either. Yeah. So, so we looked and looked and looked. Man, we couldn't find one anywhere. We couldn't find one anywhere. Months. It was it was literally probably six or eight months we were looking no, for No, it wasn't. God, Maybe you are two years. so bad on your timeline. Um, so ten years after we started looking for a car, this car pops up in Hennessy. I started Road. looking in October. After I bought my equipment, I was like, I need an S197. Like, I knew that's what we wanted. And I, I kept looking and could never find anything. In January, at the end of January 2020, I found... The white Mustang, and it was just, just in Hendersonville, which, which was is awesome. It's Twenty like miles down the road, not far. It's not far. I left work. I was like, I'm out because it was cheap. Yeah, cheaper. I mean, none of them were cheap. We picked it up in the cheap as hell compared to what they go for and right it, now. It was a salvage title, so I mean, yeah, it got hit by it got hit in the butt by a motorcycle. It was fully repaired and repainted when we got the car, though, and the wheels don't know they. It got looks hit. good. It looks really yeah, it's good. fine. So uh, we picked that car up. Uh, we had talked to a lot of friends, uh, Robert, Michael, Moore, Mike Moore, uh, Ted Theodore, a bunch of people, and they were like, just buy it, finish, because it's too much to build a car. We so, won't talk about how many people tried to get me to buy a Miata. 
And well, a lot that's a, of people tried to get you. That's to buy another Miata. rant. Uh, Miatas aren't for everyone. A uh, lot of people tried to pressure you into buying cars that they wanted to co-drive with you. Uh, lots of pressure there. We don't really talk to a lot of those people anymore because we don't like users. But didn't buy a Miata. They didn't buy a Miata. Didn't buy a BMW. Bought a the white race car. My white race car, right? So, but worn out suspension. Worn. I mean, it was, right there. it was a good car, good good base. But you know, we got it home and started you ripping it suspension. apart. Put a suspension on it. Ripped the interior out. Took it to Troy Wilson. He welded a cage in for us. I did. I did. We one... did. We did all that shit. And first, we we did the suspension. We did the brakes. We did all the stuff except for the cage because we couldn't get it scheduled before my first track event, which was back at Road Atlanta, and it was going to be my first HPDE with NASA. That's right. And it would be HPDE one in my car, but it did have seats and uh, suspension brakes. You know, we had we had changed the most things we yeah, figured would be wrong. Yeah, it had five hundred brakes on it now, and it went good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I got there, it was an HPD one. They treated me like I didn't know anything, so I didn't. I mean, it's just how it was. Yeah, spent a lot of time getting comfortable with the track. Had a instructor that knew the track well. Um, I wouldn't say that. My NASA instructor at the time knew. I know there's all levels of instructors, so I don't want to downgrade or downplay anybody's instructing abilities. I did learn something from my NASA instructor, which is to shift to fourth under the bridge coming down because shifting lower can ups upset the car, and you're already at a high enough speed. So I did learn. I did learn one thing. So can't you know can't hate on that too much, but. I was told at the time that I would have to complete at least four or five HPDs. Yeah, they're re restructuring the allotment of people getting into time trials and wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, which was the big reason you were there, was so you could do wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Right. I wanted to show my skills, hopefully oh, get that signed was, off. I thought that. Fuck you thought that was on I you? I was like, what's that? That's hilarious. Who's that? It's a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up. Um, I... I thought that HPDE would work that you drive, you get marks, you get recommendations, and then you show up the next one and you're doing better. So they go, okay, you know, HPDE 2. And then you work up to HPDE 3 and then 4. And then you can do, um, they have like a sprint race, something like that. I can't remember what it's called. It's like a two hour enduro It's like an, a two hour enduro where you can go ahead and get your competition license in NASA or if you're an HPD three or four, you can go ahead and get your time trials license. But when I got there, they were like, okay, cool. Here's your logbook. I still have the logbook. And there's four HPDEs per program. So you had to do three to four HPDEs, like one, and then you would do three to four HPDE two, then three to four HPDE three, and then four. And once you completed four, then you could possibly get your competition license. I don't know Which if they I, put you in. I think you could do time trials at HPDE three. I'm I not think sure. that's what it was. I do want to say it was three, but it was. Still so that like, was like four years from now. It like was we're going to do this. We're going to do this for four years, and Which then you get cool. to compete. Which is cool. I mean, there's definitely people. Nothing against that if that's what you want to do. But, but the, like, I was like, but what if I can prove mm -hmm. myself? And they were like, no. Like I, I literally asked. I was like, but can I just? show that I can do all this stuff to move up to the and there's they literally told me no you're gonna have to do this many HPD ones this many HPD yeah. twos and I was like and they're as much as any other time trials they're, event hill they're climb actually track a little event. bit more they're expensive they're a little bit more it was like they're 400 like, something bucks I don't know what it's happening it's, you look fine it's, all, it's awesome day. it's great I got my frizzy hair on Colt so but, pull the heater it's my legs are it's fine. I'm 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 good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So I just so, don't like talking about this because I don't want to throw anybody down the street. No, I mean and it's just how it worked out. Every for time us. we tell people this about NASA, they're like, What? That's not what happened with me. That's not how it went. And I'm like, Well, I'm the one person they said no. 
you can't just show yeah, us mean, what you can do and we'll no move one, you up. No like, one has asked. corrected that statement yet. I literally asked. So I, was like, well, I encourage I it. I encourage it was a rough. correction for that statement because that was told to you in the classroom with all the instructors, and you know, so it was. It was very disheartening. So, yeah. and then COVID hit. And it was COVID. nothing. So, we were at Road Atlanta right after the Italians came March with Ferrari. 14, 15. And it 20. was literally the next fucking week that they locked the country down. Yeah, it was great. And it was, it was not great that start. We so were like, fuck. Now what? We literally you know? were like, so fuck. we built this car to do NASA. And now there's and no And now events. we can't do any NASA events. And I was disheartened and because I was like, if we do NASA events, it's going to take four years to do any competition. It's going to be four years before I can do anything. And I was what do lost. I was a little lost. Right? And then, and I'm like, we busted our ass to get this car done for one event because we were in here. Like, we got the car ready in like two and a half months. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was real So... Fast. So we went, and it took a long time because I wanted to do everything, mm -hmm. it was and proper. he had to tell me, he had to tell me, he had to show me, tell me. Yeah, that's right. You so were mom so was mad. Started wrenching. Yeah, that so I did everything on this thing. car. This is I did everything, and he it took it took a lot more time. So, so we so we just basically were like, well, I don't know what we're gonna do. Now. I don't know what we're gonna do. It's COVID, and we waited and waited and waited. We ripped our kitchen then, apart. We yeah, just we, started we doing shit on the house. We destroyed our house. <laughs> know what to do and then and we, then i heard the dragon the chase and the dragon hill climb was going to be happening and i was like yeah it's it. just a back road and i called kyle i was like so they're going to be doing this hill climb thing you know it's just a back road i'm thinking about signing up he's like do it and see we have a connection uh ted theodore had kind of been mentoring me mm -hmm. through this whole process like helping me uh decide on a car figure out a strategic plan how do i want to go which way do i want to you know what yeah, organization everything. everything like he had really been our right hand man and he also is one of the guys that started the dragon hill climb so he had always been talking about it and i had known people that had driven it and they were having it in 2020 and i was like no spectators well, like maybe I can Full do that. COVID rules and what, but this that was like road, an right? event. Like, let's do an event. We got a race car. Let's, let's do just, an event. Let's just do it. And I sent Ted a message that morning. I was like, "Hey, I'm thinking about signing up." He's like, "You should absolutely sign up." And I was like, "Done. Signed up. Done." Mm -hmm. So I signed up, and my first competition was the Chasing the Dragon Hill Climb. Yeah, that was your first competitive event in the race. Car. In the race car. And, and what happened at that event? I won. And you set, a, you new set record. a new record. A new record for your class, won your class. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a terrible time. It was good. The uh, car. It was raining. It was for raining. One of the days. That was so fun. Sketchy shit. It wasn't sketchy. Um, it was just a back road, y'all. It's just a back road. That was her first encounter with an SCCA event yes. in competition. And it was really good. And the people were. We're great, and I'm not trying to say that the NASA people weren't great. We got a lot of really good friends That's that true. are in the NASA community. That's true. It was just a matter of where you could start doing competition first, and SCCA provided that they for did. you that year. And I think the I was, next events... I was on the hill at the Chasing the Dragon Hill Climb, and there was a guy driving a Civic, and I had, oh, yeah. I had known of him... No, it was an Ac Integra. Was yeah, an Integra. Had an Integra. And I had known of him, but I hadn't really ever met him in any way. Talked to him, finally. And his name was Hayward Wagner. And he was like, why don't you do a time trials? And I was like, whoa. What that is. I, you know, what that is, James. I am just getting started in NASA. I got four years before I can get my time trials license. And he looked at me like I was crazy crazy and on drugs and he was like no just come on out to nationals you do a time trials in when was it when was it that year was it, it was september it was in september was at nice. ncm so you could nice come do weather. the nationals tour at you ncm come, you in september you should come he was like you're gonna get four days of track time for like a regular track event 
And it I was is. just it's, like, it's banging for money. real? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you know, don't worry about how you play. Just come out and drive. And I was like, I don't have a, t- I don't have a license or anything. He was like, you don't need a you license. Have, you need a driver's license. You just need a driver's license. And I get why some people in race cars or that drive race cars might think that's a scary thing to hear about your fellow drivers. But SCCA does a really good job of spacing people out. I've like, never the, seen two cars hit each other. Knock yeah, on wood. Knock on right. wood because I don't want that to ever happen. But no, I haven't either. I've never seen another car hit another car. Ever. I see cars go off. But I, yeah, I see you, people overdriving their cars. So we went, things. you know, and we're renting U-Haul trailers. It's to all janky, these events. fucking, we're the pores when we get there. We didn't know what to this. do. We're we bringing our kids on, everywhere. Pulling the kids with us because it's COVID and they don't have school anyway. So, so we went. April's like, this is the coolest thing in the world. Geo's having fun. Uh, I'm running the camera and doing pit crew. And I don't know what I'm doing. Or meeting people. Meeting people. We so met amazing. Ansel Henry there. It was really, really awesome. Uh, and that's just kind and of that where was it the started. Beginning of, that's just where um, it was. Your it was competition. Like, mm-hmm. My next event was mm-hmm. Road Atlanta, and I took third. Yeah, at that and, Road Atlanta time trial event. And it's nothing against any. It's nothing against NASA or BMW. No, it's just, or anything. This is it's the just path that's that's, that's been... the way that it got laid out for you. Yep. And I really feel that it's it's extremely healthy. For you to be tracking an S197 Mustang. I love Robert it. Miller's watching. I love my car. He'll probably Thank agree. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for all your help. Uh, Robert has will been most likely agree a that really good these Mustangs are really good track cars. They're really rewarding track cars. It's not the easiest track car to drive. Um, if you buy a 3 Series BMW, it will be way more forgiving on track than a solid rear axle Mustang will be. Uh, But if you can drive a solid rear axle car on track, chances are you can drive just about anything on track. And that is the benefit of getting a car that is a little atypical, is that um, hopping into another vehicle is not so intimidating because you're driving one of the harder vehicles because they're all... Solid rear axle is junk. Nobody wants to drive that on track. And when you can throw down a good lap time in a car like that, where you have to slide the back of the car around the corners to get those lap times that everybody else is getting because they have an independent rear suspension and they're not making a lot of torque rear at the lower end of their throttle input, it says a lot. And I think that people notice that. And it's important... For them to see where you came from, you know, you weren't in a drag racing family or a Mustang family. I wasn't in any motorsport family. No, this began here. There was no motorsport. Your dad liked big motors and fast cars, but he never took any of them to track or drag racing or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't own, I never owned a car. Um... We're 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 doing this, figuring it the fuck out the whole way. We're we first have, generation racers. We have a lot of <laughs> of help with a lot of our friends. We do, Honestly, man. Honestly, like couldn't do it without so many people. Not, I mean, the sponsors are awesome. Couldn't do it. I mean, they we have Church awesome. of Speed swag on, Charisma, Trinity Farms. Um. These these sweatshirts would look good on your loved ones. Yeah. So buy maybe not a drug runner Baja on your They're kid. They're not drug runner Bajas. Look at the hats. They're awesome. Look at this. It looks so. We're it's from awesome. the south. Yeah, this looks like. It looks Ku Klux real Klan bad. I'm like, it looks oh. real bad. I didn't get a light colored one. I don't like that. But at all. um, Mm-mm. they are. The car community has been amazing. The people we have met along the way, the NASA Spec Iron Guides. Um, Terry Fair. Terry Fair with Vorschlag. Even our newest Mustang friends with uh, Live Fast Racing, mm-hmm. which is uh, the Armstrong. Nikki and Brian. And, and is it Don? Mustang, Mustang Don. Don. You know, these are people we just met on a last track event. 
uh, Racing for ALS crew. There's so many freaking awesome people, and and we couldn't do anything we're doing by ourselves. But for somebody that is on looking, maybe watching this that doesn't do any of this, that's the path we have taken. And you have you have a lot of of growth that you can gain just being at these track events, not even driving, just by learning who the people are, who's done this before you, who's doing this a certain way. Um, and I'm really thankful because I'm dumb shy, like really, really shy. I'm not. And Kyle's really not. Fun. He'll just send messages. So Kyle does like, a lot hey, on my behalf, asking that? how do we do this, what can we do, um, I often put him behind my like social media, like messaging, just to let him talk to people. Because I, yeah, I, I don't know, know how is, to though. be Sneaky. direct that he is. So Kyle is fantastic with talking to all these people, and I just appreciate yeah. how open and, they've been with information. Because oh man, everybody is so palms up in 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 both. SCCA and NASA communities and the hill climb community, which I wouldn't put hill. I know hill climb is run by SCCA, but that's kind of its own thing. It is. Um, it does feel our separate. closest friends on track right now are from the hill climb group. I mean, we got three guys on top of me and you that. I don't know. I, I, it is just. I feel so spoiled with how many amazing. friends we have. The, I am the camaraderie we have with with those guys and be Feeling. be ready for that next year because that kind of just came to fruition at the end of the season this year and there's no telling because they play y'all place everywhere you go and that's the that insane hill climb posse you never heard me say it before that's you our insane james curry sam wright and lawrence shoe and they're all amazing drivers. Uh, I don't know what 2022 will hold for you four, but we'll just have to see, you know. We'll, I know what it's going to be. We're along for the ride. And Fucking shit ton of gold lots of, medals. Lots of winners. <laughs> yeah, and Ron is talking about, he just started and talking about the community. And it, it's such a big it's deal. It's awesome, really. It, I mean, it's a huge thing. The motorsport community is pretty freaking amazing, and when you get down to a hill climb level, and I also have hill to, climb level is I, like well, immediate the, family. The two events that we've been to with Ron is um, been we did the time trials regional, which was heavy in racing for ALS, and then it was the racing for ALS private track day, and that's just <sighs> a completely de different group as well. Just super tight knit, feels like family when you're around them you know it's just we're all in it together and and that's what a hill climb feels like mm -hmm. and even the time trials when you're in your paddock time trials is good because a lot of recurring people near you come is just you know we all got different tools we all got jacks yeah. and jacks and you message him before you get there like where are you gonna paddock oh be? man we gotta be near you guys yeah. or whatever I mean, so so yeah, it's definitely a really. And you can't forget Ansel because Ansel's Ansel been like Henry's one of our man. number. He's the, number he's one, the time trials S one ninety seven guru. He's he fast. runs. He run, I don't know he's how. He's really fucking. He fast. runs spec iron times with two hundred tread wear. To, he's he's fast dude. His, but uh, he's, he's got a, a black cool S one ninety seven. I really Mustang. like him. Super and nice guy. A lot. But yeah, I mean, I Missy can't say wife. that. I can't say that we've ever had a bad experience with any of these events on track. I think there's just some experiences that resonated with us a little more than others, and we have pursued mm -hmm. them more because of that, I guess. is, is Yeah, what... I mean, we've done Track Night in America, and that's where we met John. Dick yeah. Dick Asanzo and the Viper, yeah. and Greg Garrett, which I was a long-time internet follower. Um, he's a Mustang G350R. 350 owner. Yeah. I mean, Mustang guy. I should just say Mustang guy. So, I've been all around the SCCA events from regional time trials, national time trials, to track night in America, to hill climbs, mm -hmm. and I've just am repeatedly 
really happy with all the people. Yeah, ACCA is great. You know, they got a magazine. They like putting your picture in every once in a while. And I like the Spec Iron guys um, from NASA. So Trad, that's all Slayton, say, and Perry Bennett photograph for SCCA. They do awesome. Um, another another awesome couple of guys that we've become, you know, really close friends with. Um, it's just, there's so much. I mean, if, if, if every one of those people lived in a town, What's that you would never not be near a friend. I mean, there's just so many people that. I think these boys are trying to start are, shit. You better not be starting shit. Don't start no shit, there won't be no shit. I don't know what you're talking about, the incident. Yeah, I Are they talking about, really? Mm. My one, my one major mess up. We can't talk about that. I'm no, still, I'm still so embarrassed. But, yeah, it's just been That's good, you know. And next year, I mean, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Um... There's new stuff on the horizon for you for endurance racing. There's new stuff on the horizon for you potentially for employment. There's new stuff on the horizon for you for your local autocross club. <laughs> There's just so There's much. So There's so much going on. 2022 is going to be so lit. It's going to be a bunch of cool stuff I've going on. I've been throwing up deuces we got a, we got since a new like rig, so 2008. We can, we I knew pull. 22 was going to be my year. It might, I don't know. Like, I 2022 is going to be yeah, a memorable year. We, we can travel somehow. farther now that we have a better tow rig. So there will be new tracks maybe for next year, you know. I would really like to get to Pit Race. Where's that? Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. What track is that? I can't remember. Right. The second, it's a very obvious track. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember what track it is. Pittsburgh. What track is in Pittsburgh, people? Oh, fuck. I don't have my phone because my phone's right there, or I would just Google it. I know what it is. I can't believe I can't remember it. I can't remember it right now. Um, uh, somebody, seriously. Pittsburgh Raceway? No. Oh, we're, we're losing it, you guys. Maybe it's not in Pit. It's at Pit Ray. It's the, uh, it's the one. I mean, Motorsport for the Masses went there. And we're doing a little race. You're talking about Rockingham? No, it's up north. Anyway, I also want to come to Pennsylvania Hill Climb. I really it's want. It's in Pittsburgh? Who fucking knows? There needs to be some spec iron racing next year. Um, I don't know if NASA is going to give me my competition license, but maybe in 2023, once I have my SCCA competition license. Who said that? Robert. Get her in, man. Robert, which one? Miller? Miller, yeah. He wants me to come race Spec Iron. He wants to kick my ass at Spec Iron is what he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Um, Summit Point? Summit. Summit Point. That's the one. That's the one. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie and Lawrence. That See, that's it. So, Robert. Robert races Spec Iron in With NASA. NASA. So the re so and I don't know if we've told you this before and we've said it on here but I don't know if you're watching is that when she did her first HPDE with NASA they were like it's going to be four years before you get to do any competition and that was really the beginning of her like well she's like for real I mean it's going to be four years and then COVID hit and then she went straight into competition with SCCA because they opened up before NASA and she hasn't went back for that so I can't I can all, I'm when I read it I'm like so they're looking at me weird while I'm trying to read everybody's comments so that is uh so that's why yes. so I don't know how I don't know how you could race spec iron next year I don't unless that someone was like oh man she can wheel Unless and, somebody just signed me off, yeah, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know have wheel to wheel experience, so I don't think I should just get a competition license. I do still feel like I need to prove myself, but I am going to be doing an AER enduro, so there's going to be some wheel to wheel experience. There's some other wheel to wheel things I want to get involved oh, with. Actually. 
Mm. So it's we'll have to leave that one under wraps. For it's a hundred percent. Might on also my be your venture back into BMW land. There's 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 some things happening. Yeah, we don't know for sure. Might like we said, five, some five day plan, people. Five days. That's all we do. Five days in advance. Yeah. And right now, race cars out of gas, so we're gonna have to fill up one yeah. of our gas tanks Can't go nowhere and fill right her now. up. Uh, she, so at VIR, when you were having fuel starvation issues, it was it was fuel. fuel starvation issues somehow. But I also think there was brake fluid on the ABS sensors. There was a bunch of weird stuff I think, going on. I think it was another perfect storm. Yeah. So I, next time... I have a habit of those. Next time I'm live on here, probably this weekend, we'll be fixing the... We're going to do a brake caliper, caliper rebuild. And uh, hopefully when we pull the rear more gas piston, in there. It's, a, it's a single piston caliper hopefully we pull that piston it's all not all beat up because you can't buy one right now but if it is i uh i know a machinist and yeah we might i might be to, able we to might perform have to make some, some shit. favors would you make me a new piston if i asked you real nice let's see you're such a tease how would i do it though i mean without work oh possible but we'll see what we gotta make but we made it awkward we'll uh <laughs> we'll talk about that later <laughs> so. but anyway we are gonna have to rebuild the rear caliper back here and we also went ahead and bought an extra rear caliper caliper rebuild kit we bought two front caliper, we got rebuild, caliper rebuild kit we were like you get a caliper rebuild kit. You get a caliper rebuild kit. We bought them all. So yeah, we got a caliper rotors, rebuild kit. Bought and, new uh, rotors. Four new rotors all around. That's my Christmas present. Um, Great. What the fuck else are you going to buy me? me? Like, seriously. I thought you need, I thought you wanted that steering wheel, but I guess not. Man. I do want a steering wheel. I want to... So I want the quick disconnect Sparco, like, steering wheel. Thing. I do want it. It's like a five hundred dollar system. It's mm -hmm. gonna happen. But a new steering wheel is not as high a priority as fixing my fuel starvation issue. So yeah. I have to really dig into the rules so to see if I can put in a surge pump on my yeah, fuel we really system. Yeah, we surge pump. Because in. I'm having really, really bad fuel issues on the car. It, it is killing me. So um, gonna have to look into that. Making sure the caliper's fixed and figuring out what kind of tires I'm going to run next year. Yeah, that's, that's the next a, that's thing you got to figure out. And if you're thinking about tires, you need to think about it now. Don't wait until March. Everybody's going to buy all them 200 treadwares by March. So if you're if you're yeah. if you're going to need new tires for next year, think Unless about them now. Want, buy them like now. Like 285, 35, 285, 40, 18s. Then wait till right after we get out. <laughs> So, I'm probably still going to run a 30. It is a hump tank, Lawrence. That's what the problem is. So you buy a surge protector. It's a saddle a bag. Protector. They call it saddle bags. Yeah. Not a hump tank. It's so a hump you... tank. Hump tank. Hump tank. That sounds like a sticker. Yeah. But, yeah, it, so it's a, so she has a fuel starvation bag. problem, so she needs a surge pump. Yeah. Um, currently, I think if you put a surge pump in, you have to have what safety precautions for that? Level three. Which is what? Full cage. A full cage? Really? Yeah. That's stupid. I know. A full cage for a surge pump? Why the fuck does that make a difference? Uh, I think if that the surge pump potentially lights on fire, you need to be fully protected from rolling. I think the surge pump is included with a new tank. I think that's a whole system. Like, I think that's all in the fuel. I, you know what? I know a guy. I have to talk to some people. I'm gonna have to talk to old JK and mm -hmm. uh, and actually I might get a closer look at those TT rules just in my future, but I can't tell y'all about that yet. So, um, what else do you want to talk about? That was fun. What? <laughs> I just told my whole that life was the story. Life story. You're so welcome. That was my well, whole. Well, it's nine o'clock. That was my whole life story. It's, yeah, it's nine o'clock. So that was it. It's probably about time you know to wrap everything. It up. You we'll know continue all the important this parts. next week. Oh my gosh! Same bat time and same bat channel. Freaking crazy time! No, I think that was enough for this evening. We Lord. gotta put these kids to sleep. 
What do you say? You can strip. You can strip more from the car for safety. Why aren't you a cheater? Mm -hmm. <gasps> I will only admit that whatever cheats you have on your car are not four seconds. And I'm just fucking slower than you right now. He is a... He's right a, now. He is a brazen... Uh, but you just wait. You just wait till there's trees and cliffs and stuff. Yeah. Because then that's where I send it, and you get all his little his crazy. little BMW BMW nuts just shrivel up. He said it, not me. Love you guys. <laughs> bye bye. Have a great week in this awkward time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We'll see you next Monday. Bye.